All right, we're back. We're on page 122 of math analysis, and we are going to talk about vectors and lines, um, and we're going to talk about some things that uh, maybe will feel really obvious, but nothing about vectors is really obvious until you start doing them. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do that. So uh, first fact, every line contains an infinite number of points. Okay, we all know that. Since there's an infinite number of points, you can create an infinite number of vectors from those points. Now that's kind of going to be an important thing. So we can pick any two points that are on a line um, and we will create a vector. What I'm telling you right now is that all of those vectors will have something in common. Uh, and let's see if we can work that out. So first, we are given the line 5x minus 10y equals 100. I'm going to find three sets of points on the line. So we need six points that are on that line. Uh, and then the vectors between those points. Okay, so we can we can probably do that. We could just use a calculator um, and, and kind of like spit these out really quickly, but let's see. If you don't have a calculator, what, what are the obvious choices, right? So the first, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let x be 0, and if x is 0, then y has to be negative 10. Then I'm going to let uh, y be 0, and if y is 0, then x must be 20. And then, uh, so what vector should I do? I'm going to do the vector from, uh, from here to here. So, uh, and the reason I'm doing that, I usually just choose it. So if I can, I'll get positive values. It doesn't really make a difference. So uh, I'm gonna do a vector from and to. So I'm gonna say this is like A, B, and then I'm gonna make the vector A, B, right? So that's gonna be 20 minus zero is 20, zero minus negative 10 is 10. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, so let's say, uh, what's, what's another thing that we can do? Well, we could say, uh, I don't know, if x, is, if x is 10, then y has to be negative 5, and then uh, that would give me 50 plus 50, so 100. And then, uh, I don't know, if, uh, well, I mean, I guess like three sets, I could, I could just go back uh, and use like 0, negative 10 again. I'm not going to do that. That seems lame, but I could do it. Uh, I'll use x is two and then y has to be negative nine so that's annoying now what vector am i going to make uh i don't know if it matters i'm going to go you know what i'm going to call this a and call this b and i'll get the vector a b again i should probably call them c and d or something let's use let's use different things so here and here so i will call this i forget which one i was doing so i'm going to start here and end here so I'll get the vector CD, which is going to be two minus, no, that was, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, terminal minus initial. So 10 minus two is eight. And then negative five minus negative nine is four. So now already, if I look at the two vectors that I found, I kind of noticed something. Uh, this vector is like 10 times two, one. And this vector is four times two one so those are scalar multiples of the same vector um which is interesting right so like two one is like this proto vector that's kind of like in there that's not even the most important vector but it's it's related so can i get one more of these uh 10 5 let's go no six all right so i guess if i just use an even number for x that's 30 so then i need negative seven for another 70 and then if I do eight, that's 40. So then I need negative six. And then, uh, I don't know, which of these should I do? I'm gonna do um, start, start here, end here. Do I like an order to that? Should I always do the smaller X value? I don't know, whatever. Uh, EF. I feel like I always wanna be going to the something. To the, left, to the left or the right, one of those. All right, so uh, that's eight minus six is two, and then negative six minus negative seven is one. So look at that, we got like the actual, like the proto vector that I'm like pretending is a thing. Um, so what's happening here? Well, uh, each of these vectors, I think, should be parallel to each other. Like I feel like all of these vectors are just par parallel to each other. How could they not be? They all come from points that are on a line. Now what this says to do is take each of the vectors, divide them by their respective lengths, 
and simplify. So if I do, what am I doing here? Uh, the magnitude of AB. Do I want to do this by hand? I mean, I don't want to do this by hand, but I think I can. So the magnitude of AB is going to be 10 times the magnitude of the vector 2, 1. Right? This is one of those properties of scalar, of scalar, uh, scalar multiplication. Right? So this is just going to be 10 times the magnitude of 2, 1 is 2 squared plus 1, so 10 root 5. Um, so if I do AB divided by the magnitude of AB, I'm going to get, uh, so you get 10, 2, 1 divided by 10 root 5, which is uh, 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. Okay, interesting. Uh, the magnitude of CD is just going to be 4 times the magnitude of 2, 1, so 4 root 5. And then if I do CD divided by the magnitude of CD. So what I'm doing right now is called, uh, I'm normalizing the vectors. Uh, I'm dividing, I'm taking a vector and dividing it by its own magnitude, which like, think about what that must do. You have a vector that starts off with a magnitude of four root five, and then you divide it by four root five. So it had a magnitude of four root five, and you just scaled it down by a factor of four root five. You scaled it down to a vector that has a magnitude of one. Um, so this, again, you get 4, 2, 1, over 4 root, five. oh my god, what happened there? That radical, crazy. Uh, so this again gives me 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. And then you can just see, I didn't really plan that, but uh, you can see that EF over the magnitude of EF is going to give me 2. 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. So in all cases, all of them reduce down to 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. All of the vectors I'm telling you are parallel. How could they not be, right? If we, if we in theory, I wish I had more space for this. I like drew a line. And then I just picked a bunch of points from it. Like every, every vector you get from there is either going to be parallel to every other vector or it's going to be like, parallel but in the opposite direction, but still like fitting our definition of parallel as we probably feel it. Um, and when I took each of the vectors and I divided them by their own magnitudes, I got the exact same vector back. So that's kind of crazy. And then one other thing that I want to point out is if I took this line, if I take the line and I solve it for y, so that's going to give me y equals 100 minus 5x over negative 10. So y equals 1 half x and then minus 50, I guess. Um, minus 50? Minus 10. Uh, I was like, yeah, there's no way that's right. Minus 10. Uh, look at the slope. Right? The slope of this is 1 half. So m is 1 half, which is delta y over delta x. So delta x is 2, delta y is 1. And where did we see that vector every single time? 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. It's like no matter what vector we started with, it became a scalar multiple of the vector that you can kind of pull right off of the slope. All of these ideas are like super important. And we're going to return to all of them. Um, but right now, let's look at this definition. So here's a definition of, um, this is a parallel vector. So two vectors are parallel if and only if they are non-zero scalar multiples of each other. So that means that A is parallel to B if and only if A is equal to K times B for some non-zero K. This is great. This gives us a really quick way um, that we can uh, work with this. So if I want to show that two vectors are not parallel, for example, I want to show that uh, 2440, so the vector 2440 is not equal to k times the vector 3, negative 5. OK, so how could I do that? Well, um, 
one of the things that I typically do is I just say like, okay, so 24 equals 3K, right? That's from the first parts, first components, the X components. That would mean that K has to equal eight. But then if I look at the other component, the Y component, 40 has to equal K times negative five or negative five K. So K would have to equal negative eight. Eight does not equal negative eight. Therefore, they're not parallel. They were close though. If we change the sign of uh, the negative five or the sign of the 40, they would have been parallel, but they're not. Um, and they're not parallel because basically what I do, the fast way that I do it is I just take a look at, I immediately will look at 40 divided by negative five is negative eight. And then I will immediately look at 24 divided by three is positive eight. Not the same number, not parallel. Uh, what about this? Solve the equation for y and use the slope to find a vector parallel to the line. Okay, so this is like what we talked about. So uh, y is equal to 12 minus 3x over negative 4. That's how I solve those all the time, by the way. I was just like get y by itself and then I simplify. Like I don't worry about simplifying as I go. And then 3 fourths x minus 3. Okay, so when I look at this, I think that delta y over delta x is 3 fourths, which means that I could say that delta x is 4 and delta y is 3. You could actually say that delta x is like 8 and then delta y would have to be 6. You could say delta x is 1 and then delta y would have to be 3 fourths. Like the, there's an infinite number of choices. So my vector parallel to the line is going to be delta x, delta y, so 4, 3. Uh, you could use negative 4, negative 3. That would be parallel to the line. Uh, any scalar multiple of the vector 4, 3. You could use 4 fifths, 3 fifths, right? Take the vector and divide it by its magnitude, which might be the best thing to do. Because then no matter, like if everybody came up with a different vector and we all were like, are they the same vector? Like, are they parallel vectors? What's going on? So what we might do is, I would be like, hey, everyone, let's just like find the length of our vectors and we'll divide our vector by the length. And then we should all get the same thing because we should all get a vector that now has a magnitude of one. And either they're gonna be the same vectors with a magnitude of one or they'll be different and we would know. So it might be a good idea to use four fifths, three fifths for that reason, who knows? But anyway, I'm gonna stop this here. I'll be back in the next video and we will be doing more with vectors and lines and I will see you there.